All right, hey everyone, welcome back once again to another episode of DAX Annie Patterns. Uh, Daniel, thanks for joining me today. Thanks, Reid. Absolutely. Today, uh, we're going to be uh, looking at um, the value uh, function, also some numbers and uh, text, I guess, and uh, some logical constructs. Uh, it's actually not as complicated as it sounds. So let me just show you the first example. Here it is. Let me try to zoom in a bit. There we go. Excellent. Yeah. Now, what's going on here? <laughs> and because I have some background as to what's supposed to be happening, uh, what we want is a flag in um, our date table that tells us whether the current date is before or equal to last available date in the whole uh, dot model. Now, if you recall, in our previous episode, we talked about how to retrieve the last available date. And in that episode, we were using measures. This mm -hmm. is a calculated column. Therefore, here, we don't need to do remove filters, because by default, this max, because it's in a calculated column, it will retrieve the uh, last available date. Yep, because all functions the maximum date. exactly. And like just as a recap from that, like functions um, by default only are able to access filters coming from the query or the visual that's inside of it. By default, it cannot access any of the um, any of the filter context or row context that's coming out of the table. So if you apply this on a column, it's just going to scan the whole table. It's going to return to you the largest value from that, um, unless you wrap it inside of a calculate. So that. As you're mentioning, we'll just return the latest order date for the entire table, regardless of what row um, it is on or what uh, what filter context for many of the other columns might be. Yeah, that's right. So that's quite handy because uh, it allows you to write uh, shorter code. So mm -hmm. in this case, uh, we just want to compare two dates: the date from the current row and the date that is the last available in uh, the sale table. And yep. then, um, in case uh, the current rows uh, date is the same or uh, before the last available, available date, then we want to display uh, one, otherwise zero. So it's kind of like a true false flag, except it's a number. So Reed, have you got any issues uh, with this formula? Well, let's see. We got the top one, which returns it for the whole table. That's declared as a variable in cached. We got this date, which is each. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering about the second one, though, because I mean, generally, the variables on top of like they do a few things they're 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 an optimization because it caches the value and it only returns one value so if you declare it as a variable would you not only would you actually get a separate value each time or would you um because uh, or would you get just a like a single repeating one does it keep does it keep the the right context declaring it as a variable versus just replacing this state in in the actual return statement um with the date key yeah, so here, that's uh, not an issue. I mean, uh, because this formula is going to be calculated uh, row by row in each that's true. row, okay. this, this date uh, variable yep. uh, will have the, a different value like for every row. So, so that's, that's okay. Okay. Now, uh, and then you have maybe... your, yeah, so then it won't be that then. So your logic, uh, so if uh, the current row date of the date key, if it is less than or equal to, Basically, the latest date in your table, return a value of one else zero. Well, what you're doing is you're asking it to return an integer from a text of an integer. It is also <laughs> yes. kind of how I'm reading that. So, like, couldn't you just say <laughs> yeah. one else zero? Yeah, that's exactly right. Like, okay. why would you do this? It's like, <laughs> I don't know, speaking it, to some translator in English, and then they translate into French and then asking them to translate it back into English. Like, why? Yeah. We, we had something not too far from this in the um, in one of our earlier episodes where we actually were using, I think, the int function uh, to convert something into uh, an integer inside of the, the formula in a calculated column. Whereas like the other thing too is you can go, you can have a calculated column, you can out, have it output a text value of you know, uh, one and zero, and then you can still use the data change type to convert it back to a number. But then similar to this scenario, 
you're going from one data type to another data type back to another data type. So it's it's taking extra steps that aren't needed. Um, and this is yeah. It's a very similar effect that's happening right here. It's it's working harder than it needs to. <laughs> yeah, and uh, to show you uh, briefly what it outputs, if you take a close look, you will see that actually it's not even integers; it's decimals. So mm. we are typing integers as text and yeah. then converting them to decimals. Like <laughs> again, like why? <laughs> So the de decimal think, is the default, uh, at least. It, as soon as it recognizes a data type as number, uh, I ha it's gotten better in recent years. But at least historically, the the default was always decimal, even if it was whole number. I do think it sometime in the last year or two, I have noticed that it's starting to get smarter. New data imported as a table into Power BI, it will recognize if there actually are any decimal points, and it will now start to convert it to whole number. But it, historically, mm. it it used to just kind of like date time. The default format is date time, even though. 99% of the time when you import a date column, there's no time dimension, but it still formats that with a timestamp for some reason. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well. So Reed suggested that we can just type uh, one here and mm -hmm. zero here. And I agree. Uh, at, at the very least, we should do that. And by the way, these commas, I didn't put them myself. I strongly oppose commas at the beginning of... Uh, lines um, say what you will it's just not great <laughs> maybe some people prefer it and to debug well, or something i mean I, I when i when i'm debugging i actually like it because it lets me it lets me comment it out but dax studio now lets you quickly switch them so when you yeah. do a formatter you can quickly switch from debug mode to not and i i that was one of the only times i've, I've had a product feature request that i feel like i at least largely helped to push into it uh, into a tool <laughs> so my suggestion finally showed up in there uh, but for debugging, it's great because you quickly, if you can just show, just put two forward slashes in front of it, um, just to, just so people can see at least one use case. So you can really easily comment out a line without having to go delete yeah. the previous line's comma. So from a testing perspective, as you're writing out the measure, it is really nice. And for people who haven't used it, DAX Studio uh, has a, you know, lets you connect your model, lets you format all of it. And then they actually have an option somewhere on the top ribbon where you can actually instantly switch the decimal location, uh, the, the comma location spots. So you can go from like a debug mode like this uh, and comment out easily back to a, you know, let's say final product mode. Yeah, I agree. In the case of debugging, uh, yeah, these commas are quite nice. They mm -hmm. can save you time. I'm not arguing with that but because uh, this is a final product, like uh, Reed uh, said. I wouldn't leave it like this. Just yep. reminds me of the old days of, you know, SQL and all that stuff. I mean, SQL is still around, obviously. I'm just saying Power BI is uh, probably catered towards a different uh, audience than SQL DBAs. E yes. So, yeah, it deserves beautiful code, I think, or something <laughs> that looks uh, <laughs> nicer. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, if we think further, is this one and zero truly required, or Dep can we do something different? Depends um, on the output that I that you're going for this. So if this is, I, I see this. I'm assuming you're going to convert to maybe a binary true or false data type column because this is yes or no, uh, true or false, as like one and zero is converted to. Uh, in which case, then you technically don't need a zero necessarily. You could just have the one, and if you still convert it to binary, I. I believe it would treat the the empty as a zero and still convert it to false uh, in the data type. So I think you could just simply yeah. delete that entire row, close off the parentheses, because Power BI for the if statement, um, the alternative result, if not declared, is automatically a blank, um, which then gets yeah. treated as zero uh, in, in the, um, when it's resulting to the scalar values. Yeah. So uh, you're saying I can get rid of uh, this, right? Mm -hmm. Then uh, accept this. Then let's go here. Yes, it's blank. Now, if I change the data type mm -hmm. to uh, true false, then yes, let's continue. Then it should be uh, there. We go. True. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Read exactly right. Yes. Now. If, uh, let's say, I wanted to use even fewer characters in this formula, one way to go about it. Oh, by the way, 
if we want exactly one and zero, then we could just do say int, and then we don't even need one. So this way it's uh, already going to be one and zero. Now, if I want to have a logical output like uh, um, true false, then I don't need int at all, right? Because that because, because... that that statement the um the out the actual output from this state is less than or equal to last state. If you just declared that and think you're about to, it does return true or false as a as the the result. Right. So you are technically going yes. from true false to integer back to true false. There there is still an extra step. Um yeah yeah yeah. So we can accept uh, this. You can still see the results are false mm -hmm. and true as expected. Now, maybe these variables make um, this formula easier to read. I don't know. I guess it's a matter of taste. In the end, maybe you don't even need them because you could just do this. Yeah. Right? You don't need var, return, all that stuff. So your formula can be even shorter like this. The one, the this one uh, benefit is, uh, or one of many, um, is the the debugging features. When you have the return statement, like if you have variable one, variable two, and a result variable, and Marco and Alberto preach this a lot, is then at any point, yes, it there's no performance optimization, nothing is like faster. But if at any point, like wait, the result's not right. All right, let me test variable one. Let me test variable two. It's really easy to switch between them. So from a from a future date, if you have to go back into your code. That's one possible reason to want to keep the variables declared, just uh, just for debugging purposes. I fully agree, and uh, unfortunately, I, I cannot press uh, Control Z yeah. still <laughs> to go back to what it was. So I cannot yeah. go back to variables unless I type them. I fully agree. When I write my formulas, then I um, almost always have a return statement. No, yep. And sorry, uh, the result variable, and then in the return statement, I use the result uh, variable just by itself. Because uh, it makes it much easier to return some other variables yep. in case I want it. Essentially, the, the okay. by by practice, like uh, summarization of that recommendation practice is, if the measure or column can be split up to multiple parts of testing, that's a good uh, use case to have the variables for the items plus the result. But as an example, if it's calculate like it's, if it's total bike sales, calculate bike sales, you know, uh, category equals bikes. There's not really portions of that that can be ran as an independent measure retested. So there's no reason to do any kind of variable declaration because you only will have one variable, uh, which is your result variable anyways. It's only if you can actually parse out into separate variables the individual components to test that it becomes applicable. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you know if we can apply um, custom format strings to logical values? I honestly don't know. Like previously, we <laughs> couldn't do it in analysis services. You could do it, and then you could do some uh, cool things with this. Do you know? I wish I wish you could. I've, I've, I've not tried for a couple of years. I do know that it, I, I usually recommend this first to clients, but sometimes, well, we don't want it to say like true and false. We want it to say like yes and no. All right, well, then you actually have to have an if statement. If true, equal text yes and you know yada. Uh, but I've not tried that so far, so let like let's both figure out if uh, let's custom try format it. strings. Yeah. Nope. That's uh, that I was going to be work. really okay. excited if we just like uncovered something. Like, all right, that's a that's a blog article by itself, or at least yeah. a tweet. Mm -hmm. let, <laughs> maybe let me try at least with the format function. Yep. I haven't tried that in a while oh. either. That's another interesting way to do it, because yeah, otherwise it's you know just if it's an if statement that uh, that you do. Okay, let's see. Uh, mm. <laughs> okay, what if I change the data type to text? Nope. That yeah, you just you Actually, have to go with wait. you, you got to go with a tried and true if statement. Yeah, see, in analysis services, you could do it. Like I've done this before. You could assign custom uh, formatting to logical values, and it was quite nice because under the hood, it was still true false. So in uh, DAX formulas, you could say this column equals true, and that would work as a filter. But it was displayed differently. Now I yep. just wish um, uh, this was available in Power BI. Let's just show them as as like a, as a final result, and like just what what the the clean if statement would look like. If uh, this. 
Um, you gotta love the intelligence that like pops up in the anno annoying locations, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There we go. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Now this is the uh, the result of this uh, if uh, statement, and because mm -hmm. it's text, it is sorted alphabetically. Uh, so if you want to have a different um, sorting, um, you know, order, then you might have to use a different column, yep. or maybe a visual will allow you to use that. But yeah, it is what it is. One other, uh, I say, best practice regarding this too is the, in general, if the if the only goal of this column is to service like hidden filters on the page or for filters inside of measures, basically logic that's for the model, but the customer's never going to be clicking a, a slicer to go from false to true, then generally just out, outputting a true false is usually the best practice for optimization. But if people want to click like a button on the page that has two words, there's going to be a good chance that they're going to want some like other words besides all capitalized false and all capitalized true. It's just, it doesn't display as well from a user perspective. So they, they usually want yes or no, or within or after other prettier, friendlier words for like a clickability on like a slicer on the page. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Actually, um, I am often complaining of the way some former SQL DBAs write their code, but then sometimes I'm not that different from them because sometimes <laughs> I leave true false calls when I shouldn't because normal people, they don't care about true false. They just want, you know, flags that are, easily understood like yep. yes no something like that so exactly. by all means i agree with you as much as possible we should expose some um nice values nice labels rather than you know true false yep 100 percent agree um yeah so uh yeah that's the, the example that we've uh, already covered int will give you one and zero mm -hmm. let me just show you and it's going to be exactly one and zero not decimals so yeah uh, that's uh, that's it uh, for today from my side. Yeah, I, I think it's a good optimization to, to to show the depending on the output that you have and what you're looking for in the in the display essentially. Then it like you can really shorten the, the measure down to just like a basic comparison, which automatically returns those two outputs. So I think this is a good uh, good bit of learning and some cool key insights. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Reed. <laughs> All right, cheers. Please don't forget to like, comment, or share this video. Now, if this is your first time to my channel or you want to see more of these awesome videos, please click that subscribe and notification button. Also, feel free to show your support by becoming a channel member. Last but not least, you can download the file for today's video from my blog files page using the link down below. So until next time.